You know, God is dynamic, and you need to understand what, who God is. He's dynamic. The Almighty God, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, my God and your God, who cares for each of his children, wants us to move forward in every aspect of our lives. And especially in this year, 2018, everyone in this assembly is very important to God, and he cares for you, and you will not allow the devil to destroy and make you to be ashamed. Say, I shall not be ashamed. ashamed. Hold your Bible with me. Hold your Bible. And make this confession with me. I am a child of God. I I have overcome overcome every obstacle obstacle on my way way this year year. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Victory is sure for me. Victory is sure for me. I am moving forward. I am moving forward. I am strong. I am strong. My God shall fight for me. My God shall fight for me. And I shall hold my peace. I shall hold I shall be healthy. I shall be healthy. I will not die. I will not die. I will leave. I will leave. To declare declare the glory of the Lord. The glory of the the land of the living. In the land of the the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I possess the gate of my enemies. I possess the gates of my enemies. In the name of Jesus. Vineyard. Vineyard. You shall prosper. You shall prosper. And everyone that comes in you and everyone that shall prosper. prosper. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because the glory belongs to you. And let the people say Amen. Amen. The Bible says you shall have whatever you say. It is very, very important for us to understand that God wants us to move forward. God wants us to move forward in different areas of our lives. And we're going to take the first aspect of this. And next week we'll look at some other aspects. The first aspect which you need to take care of and move forward is your spiritual life. Spiritual life. Some people might say, why? Why is it important? You know, one of the areas that people, many people don't pay attention to is spiritual life. They don't pay attention to their spiritual life. They pay attention to their other things. They pay attention to their academics. They pay attention to their finance. They pay attention, but they don't pay serious attention on their spiritual life. And let me tell you one thing. Spiritual life controls everything. Everything. If your spiritual life is not in good shape, it will affect your finance. It will affect your health. It will affect your f- every aspect of your life. Mm-hmm. And many people don't understand it. And you may be saying, why? Where did you get that in the Bible? Is this man saying it correctly? Open your Bible with me to Exodus chapter 17. In Exodus chapter 17, I want to show to you from the scripture so that you will understand. Exodus chapter 17, starting from verse 8 to 16. Quickly. <laughs> And I will read. He said, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Take note of this. There was a fight between Amalek and who? And Israel. And don't ever think that the devil will leave you alone and he won't fight. No, the devil will fight. And he will use every means he can use to fight you to discourage you, to weigh you down, to make sure you are, you are sad, to make sure you don't achieve the purpose of God. The blessing that God has ordained for you will try to hinder it. <laughs> Here, and they came to fight the Israelites. The Israelites were going to the promised land. This year is a year of promise for us. Yes. Amen. 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 And they came to fight with the Amalek. And verse 9 said, And Moses said to Joshua, Choose out men, go out, Fight with Amalek tomorrow, I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And so Joshua did as Moses had said unto him. And he fought with Amalek, and Moses, take note of this, Moses, Aaron, and all went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11, that's the key verse I want you to take note. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Amalek what? Prevailed. When Moses laid down his hand, Amalek what? Prevail. Take note of this. When Moses' hand was up, Israel prevailed. When his hand was down, what happened? What do you understand by that? That is our prayer house. If our prayer house is on fire, we will always prevail. If your prayer line is on fire, you will prevail. The day you don't pray, you lose the battle. I'm telling you the truth. Every 
small things. You might be looking at it as small things. You need to pray on your finance. You need to pray on your health. You need to pray on your car. You need to pray on your relationship. You need to pray about your neighbor. You need to pray about every small thing of your life. You need to be supported with prayers. The day you let that prayer on it, you start to lose it. Israel, the success of Israel was dependent on who? Was it on Joshua himself? On who? On God. On God, Moses. And it depends upon the level of the hand of Moses. If the hand of Moses was up, Israel prevailed. When his hand was down, Amalek prevailed. Was it dependent upon Joshua that was fighting the battle? No. Let me tell you, the people of God, we need to understand the importance of praying and intercession and fasting and prayer. And we're in this mode right now. If our prayer is fervent, you will see God doing things He has supposed to do. But when we don't pray, nothing happens. And let me tell you one thing: Was it only Moses? The Bible says Moses, Aaron, and what? What do you find it? Three people that were in unity were holding the hand of Moses. It was not only Moses. Some people think it's only the pastor. No! It is the support of the people in the house of the Lord that support the hand of the leader that bring the victory through their prayers. Mm. Through their prayers! If you don't pray, nothing happens. The body of prayer. Yes! The body of Jesus Christ. <coughs> and I want you to look at that passage carefully. Go home, read it, determine what you're going to do. And Moses' hand were heavy. Listen to this. A time came Moses' hand were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under his hand, and he stayed down, and moved Aaron and all stayed up his hand. They put a stone under Moses' hand. Not only that, that. Aaron and all supported that hand. That's why the fact there was a stone. They gave the cooperation, they gave the support, they gave the intent they could do to make it steady. And what happens? And one hand on this side and the other, and the hands of Moses was what? Until it became what? <laughs> steady. Say to yourself, steady. Steady. Talk to your neighbor, be steady. Be steady. Be steady. Until steady. the going steady. down of the sun. You know one thing? When we become steady in our spiritual life, you will see a consistent victory coming through. Consistent. You know, at times we see how things better, we see things doing that because there's no steadiness. When the people of God become steady and the hand of Moses became steady, they started winning. Look at verse 13. And Joshua discomforted the Amalekites and the people and his people with the edge of his sword. When there was steadiness in their spiritual life, in their support, in what they were doing with the hand of Moses, the Bible says Joshua won the battle. It was not Joshua that was determining the success of the battle. No. It was the hand and the level of, Josh, of Moses and the steadiness. Let me tell you one thing. Your prayers, your support for this assembly, for people in this assembly, goes a long way to do a big thing and to allow God to move what he wants to do. And the Bible says in verse 14, And the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book, and rehearse it in the years of Joshua, for we utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under the head. Anyone that tried to fight us in this assembly, that tried to fight the purpose of God for your life, as we raise the hand of God in steady prayers, that person will be discomfited. Amen. I say that situation will be defeated. Amen. And Moses built an altar and called the name of the place Jehovah Word. He said, The Lord is not, is our God. And for the same, because the Lord has sworn that he will fight half war with Amalek from generation to what? To generation. People of God, take care of your spiritual life. Give your spiritual life a big time. Spend time with God in personal fellowship. When you do that, like Moses went before God, and the Bible says Moses came out and what happened? His face was what? Shining. His face was shining. He was in the presence of God. Don't go to work without you fellowshiping with God. 
-hmm. you only live for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Many of us, we just wake up, oh, I'm late, bleep, bleep, bleep. you go to the shower and you be on your way going. <coughs> That's not a good system. It is dangerous. I'm telling you the truth. Many times I've tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm seeing your struggles happen. I've learned by experience <laughs> and I've learned from the word of God that I should not wake up and just rush out of the house. Even when I'm going to the store, I need to pray, Lord, please guide my way. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. It is something we Christians take for granted. And you should not. Take care of your spiritual life so that you can move on. You can move forward. You can move forward. It is something you need to take seriously. Number two, meditate upon the word of God and obey it. Find time to meditate upon the word of God. Let me tell you, do you know one of the things that is growing in America is yoga? Do you know that yoga is growing? It's growing so rapidly. They use yoga now in medicine, am I right? They use to yeah. heal. But you know that yoga is from where? It's Eastern religion. But God has given us the secret in the word of God. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let somebody read it for us. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. What does the Bible say? Open to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Sister Ceres, can you read it? This, listen to this. This book of the law. Listen to this instruction. This book of the law shall not depart from your head. Is that what the Bible says? It said, This book of the law shall not depart out of what? What does that mean? Part from your mouth. What does that mean? It means when you wake up in the morning, say the word of God to yourself. Say the word of God to yourself. I'm healthy. I will not die. Say what God says. God will give me favor. Today, the Lord will lift me up. Today, no evil shall befall me. In my place of what the Lord shall grant me favor. I will not make mistake. I will prosper. Say good things that God has said about you to yourself. Many Christians find it difficult to say. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from what? Your mouth. The Bible says the word is in your mouth. The word of life. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says, the people said, and you will have whatever you say. If you say life is going to be hard for you, it will be hard for you. Mm -hmm. If you say, oh, this thing they won't give me, they will never give you. If you say to yourself, oh, this thing is hard for me, it will be hard for you. You will have whatever you say. What do you say to yourself? Even when you know it is hard, reverse it and say it shall be easy. Amen. I say you say it shall be what? It, it shall be easy. easy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I remember the day we went to buy a house in Hesperia. We sat everywhere we didn't get. When we got that house, they look at that house and they say, oh no, this house. You can't get it. You can't get the house. And they put a price which I don't have the money. My credit doesn't carry the money. I don't have the money. And I look at it and I say, God, thank you because you have given us this house. We get this house in the name of Jesus. And I wake up in the morning and say, Father, thank you because we have this house. It sounds crazy. Very crazy. Because, number one, the amount of money they put on the building, I don't even have my credit to carry it. And I wake up in the morning, I say, Father, thank you, Lord, because I have the money. When I'm driving, I say, Lord, thank you, because we give up. We are in that house. I see myself living in that house. And I've been living in that house over seven years now. Amen. You know what? The, the woman that was handling the building, that was looking at it for us, told us, man, this is a hard place to get. He said, what? He said, they asked you to pay $50,000 extra. And I told her, I said, Look, listen to me. Go and tell the bank that I don't have that money. And that what we say we will pay, that's what we will pay. She said, what are you talking about? Are you going to I said, <laughs> I asked her, I said, are you the bank? She said, no. I said, you go and tell them. Are you the bank? She said, no. Okay, go and tell the bank. I 
And you know, we prayed. When she left, we prayed and said, Lord, everyone she will meet, touch them. And she went. And she went and told them. I said, this man doesn't have that money. He said, the price that is there is what he's going to pay. And the bank said, okay, pay it. She came back so far. He said, said, you should pay it. I'm telling you. And today, that house is worth him over 200 and something, almost 300,000 today. From 100,000. What am I saying? (coughs) The Bible says, this word shall not depart from what? What do you say to yourself? Say things to yourself. Prophesy unto yourself, unto your life. It shall be well with me. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall meditate upon it day and what? Night. Speak on, read on, brother. Pastor, please. That Joshua 1 8. But thou shalt meditate therein day mm-hmm. and night. Yes. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Listen to this. Speaking brings possession. Possession brings action. The Bible says that you may do according to. You see, when you speak it, it, it brings something to you. It, brings you. it moves you from the realm of speaking to the realm of action. And what you need is realm of action. You don't have a job. You need a job. That thing must move from the realm of speaking to what? Action. You let me tell you one thing. In the beginning, when God speaks, his word does what? It creates things. The word of God creates what? Creates things. He said, let there be light. And the Bible says there was what? Let me tell you one thing. When you are full of the spirit of God, your word will create things. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I say it will create it. Amen. You know what the Bible says in John chapter 23? It said, <laughs> if you ask me anything in my name, I will give it to you. When you go to the Greek, let me give you the Greek meaning. The Greek said, if you ask me anything that I have not created, I will create it for you. That's amen. what it says in the Greek. That even if that thing you are asking, According to his word, has not been created. God said he will do what? He will create it for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what the Greek says. Why will God not create it for you? You think that there, God is going to create, he create it for people that hate him? He won't do that for those who hate him. He will create it for his own children. You look at yourself when your children, those of us who have children, they ask you good things. Do you go and take stone and say, take stone? <coughs> this little boy called Joshua here, what's around here? When he come to his mama, I say, Mama, I want food. Do you go and give him a stone? Eh? You don't do that. The mama will not give him, he will give him good food. Just to, just I'm to telling you. Side. Yes. Just decide, you know, call for Christmas? Yeah. They're blowing out Christmas things. They had decided to call, but they were really in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> How will God not give you good things, man? And you know something he said? He said, and you do it. Let me tell you one thing. One of the things you need to pay attention to this year is obedience. Say obedience. Obedience. Say obedience. 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 When God tells you certain things, obey him. Mm. The Tarunomi 28 said, if you will act diligently Mm. acting to the voice of the Lord thy God, the Lord shall open the door of heaven and bless you. Mm. Obedience. What God expects you to do is to obey him. They are supposed to, you don't even need to pray for it. God will make it to come your way. Because you do what? You will pay him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Deuteronomy 28 says, If you diligently act it, the Lord himself shall bless you. He shall bless your storehouse. He shall bless your fridge. He shall bless your car. He shall bless your finance. He shall bless your account. God will daily, he said, if you will diligently, you take not undermine the word diligently. It's not just obey him. You must be diligent about it. If you're not diligent about it, forget it. Yes, you must be diligent about it. Finish that verse you were reading, sir. Joshua 1 8. So then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, mm-hmm. and then thou shalt have good success. Listen, you shall make your way what? Prosperous. This year, how many of us want to prosper? Mm-hmm. 
If you want to prosper, listen to this. He said that not that you will prosper, you will have what? Good what? Success. In every aspect of our lives. Listen to this. It's a mathematical equation. Joshua 1.8 This book of the law shall not depart from you. Number one thing, you speak it. What is the second step? You should meditate on it. And you put what? Action in it. And that will give you prosperity and what? Good success. This year, God wants you to prosper. God wants me to prosper. And as a church, God wants us to prosper. In this assembly, people should be buying more houses. Amen? Amen. People should be going and getting degrees more. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, people should be having money in their back account. Amen? Amen. Amen. should not be poor because God will lift us up. Amen. Come to me and say, the Lord will lift me up. The Lord will lift me up. Tell one thing, this is, the, this is the word of the Lord. This year, God will lift you up. People will buy houses. They will buy new cars. They will move forward. They will understand the mind of God. The spirit of God will move upon them. People will come to the assembly and say, Pastor, I have a revelation from the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying. I'm telling you the truth. You will receive revelation from God. You will receive direction and say, Thank God. God giving me a direction for my life. That is what it's supposed to be. The Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail. Amen. The Bible says, when you lay hands upon it, shall prosper. You lay hands upon Even if you are selling ordinary sand, you make millions out of it. Because it's of God. It is not what you do. It is not in, of, of him that runneth, but in that showeth mercy. It is God that blesses. I'm telling you, God blesses you. He, he put blessing along your way. Not because you work for it. God will just make it to come your way. And he make it easy for you. Amen. The things that people are using 30 years and 40 years to do, God will make you to do it in five months. Amen. It just comes along your way. I'm serious about it. The money you are looking for, somebody will tell this is money, use it. Because God wants to bless your life. Amen. Why not Receive believe it. God? Why not believe God? People will come to you and say, look, what do you need? I, I'm here to help you. That is help from the Lord. Amen. God will make way where it seems to be no what? No way. God wants you to move forward. Take care of your spiritual life. Don't belittle it. And when that happens to you, the person giving is the person who Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The next thing we need to take note of. Don't forget the assemblies of the people of God. You know, many people run away from the assembly. The Bible says, in the gathering of the people of God, God commands what? Blessing. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, don't forsake the assemblies of our side together as a manner of it. Some people, the Bible says, iron sharpen irons. Some of us don't understand the importance of gathering together. Let me tell you one thing. Go and look at the evil kind of the enemy. They also mix together. Mm -hmm. One day, I was here in Corona. Corona, we never forget that day. And they put their witches at meeting here. Not in the night. Daylight. Mm -hmm. And the witches were having their meeting. Right daylight in Corona. And they put their witches at meeting here. If we, we, witches are meeting in the daylight, what about the children of God? Are we not supposed to meet together to bring down the presence of God? Yes. And when we come to the house of God, some of us say, I don't have time, man. Ah! Abba, the devil will fight everything to make sure that people of God don't gather together. Mm. He knows that when they gather, the presence of God will come down. The blessing of God will come down. Listen to God. This year, don't forsake the assemblies of God. When you come, come with an expectant act of worship God. The Bible says, God is looking for people that will worship Him in spirit and what? Mm. And in truth. God is seeking, He's looking. And these people worship me in spirit and in truth. I look forward to the day we're going to have not only Minister Greg and Sister Corinne and John Jr. on this drum set. I look forward to the day we're going to have someone with saxophone that's going to play and somebody with guitar and the cloud of the glory of God will come down. Worshiping the Lord. Minister Greg will under the anointing and start to play the piano, man. 
without looking at the keyboard, man, I'm pressing it high. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you believe that, brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even those things needs anointing. You know that. Yeah. Even to play the drum and to play the conga needs anointing. You come here with sickness, but by the time you enter here, your sickness flies away. Amen. Yeah. Don't you hear in the Bible that David was playing string instrument and the evil spirit was flying away from King Saul? Amen. Yeah. Can God not do the same in our days? Why can't we believe God for the impossible things? Why cannot we believe God and stretch forth our hands and say, Lord, we believe you, Lord? <laughs> do something new in our midst of God. May we stretch out our hands to God and say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, Lord, Lord I believe you, Lord. 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 Do a new thing in my life, Lord. There will be a lifting up. There will be door opening for me. God, do a new thing, Lord. I believe you, Lord, this year. No evil will befall me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next thing which I want you to know is be committed to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, be committed. Be say, be committed. Be say, be committed. Be Some of us might be wondering why. Open your Bible with me before I start to run. Exodus 23. Exodus 23, verse 25 to 27. Let somebody read it for us. Listen to this. I didn't write the Bible. God wrote it for us. Exodus 23. Verse 25 to 27. Let's all be ready for us. Yes. And you shall serve the Lord your God. Listen to this. And you shall serve who? The pastor. No. Who are you going to serve? No. When you serve the Lord thy God. And listen to this. Oh, many people don't know the secret. I'm telling you the truth. Why do you think when I'm doing something, I want to put my very best inside of it to serve God? God will remember you one day. You serve him. God doesn't owe anybody anything. I'm telling you, God doesn't owe anybody anything. Hello? Mm -hmm. One day, I was passing by and I saw, I used to have a, a van, brand van, and that van broke down. And I said, okay, what am I going to do with this van now? <laughs> I was thinking of junking it, and somebody said to me, don't, don't, don't junk it. This man might be useful to somebody one day. So I didn't jump in. I think, but I, but I just sure I remember that brown van. Mm. So I decided I was driving in hysteria one day on the ones. I'm not supposed to take that street, but somehow I drove that street. And I saw a van for sale. So I quickly drove back. I called the guy. I say, you selling this van? He said, yeah. How much? He said, 250. He said, but he said, but let me tell you, the transmission is not working. I said, okay. Uh, can I give you 100? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He look at me, he said, no. As we are talking, I realize he's a child of God. So I look, okay, oh my brother, you ah, praise the Lord. The man said, okay, all right, uh, give me 150. He said, 150. He gave me, I gave him 150. I know the engine was good. <laughs> the other van that was not good, what was wrong with it? No, you know, the, the, the engine was bad. So I just took it to the guy. And they just swapped it. <laughs> and so a new van came out. And that van came out, no check engine showing, nothing was where the was in a good shape. But they ah! He <laughs> said, let me tell you one thing. God will make you serve, do what? Serve who? The Lord thy God. What we have, who is reading the verse for us? Yes. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. Listen to this. If you serve God, he will do what? He will put blessing on your bread and your water. Do you know the meaning of bread and water? What is bread and water? Eh? Some what? What is bread and water? You pastors, help me now. Sustenance. Your sustenance. Your support, the thing that brings food on your table. Mm. That is bread and water. God says, I will bless your bread and water. It means that what you will eat, what will sustain you, you will never lack it. Amen. Amen. Read on. When you do what? You serve the Lord. 
Not the pastor. The pastor may not have money to give, but God in heaven has money to give you. Yes? And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The second benefit, when you serve God, God will make what? Sickness to go what? To go away from you. God will make sure when sickness is coming, he said, no, you can't put this sickness on this one. Hold your hand, sickness from this one. Read on. There shall nothing cast their young. Listen to this. Be barren. Your children, no evil shall befall them. Amen. I said no evil shall befall them. Amen. God will put a hand of protection upon them and say you will not be barren. Say I will not be barren. I will, I will not, not be barren. barren. Barrenness comes in different forms. Spiritual barrenness, financial barrenness, health barrenness. Also. God says, I will just take it away. And you will not be barren. God, if you serve him, and God doesn't do it, take this passage and say, God, you said this, you are a liar. Then you, if you don't do it. I'm serious. Let me tell you one thing. God will do it. God will do it. Read on. Finish it. Um, in the land. And the number of thy days I will fulfill. What does that mean? Number of your days I will fulfill. Mm. What does that mean? Help me out. <laughs> eh? You will not die young. That's what he's saying. Number of your days. I will, I will make sure that your years on this earth, you fulfill it. Yes. You will fulfill it. Say, I will fulfill my days. I will, I will fulfill my, my days. days. Read on. I, I, I will end. send my fear before thee. And will destroy all people to whom thou shalt come, and will make all thy enemies turn their back unto thee. When the enemy comes, they will be running away. They say that guy is coming. Let's run away from this guy. He's coming. The enemies will be running away from you. Amen. When you serve, God, <coughs> let me tell you one thing. You have a decision to make this year, whether you want to serve God or not. Whether you want to give God your very best or not. If you serve God and God doesn't do this thing. At times I read my Bible, I say, God, you said this in your word. You said you watch over your word to perform it. This is what you said. What is happening? Are you not doing it? And God said, don't worry, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm serious. He said, I will go, I'm going to do it. Brethren, this year, serve the Lord thy God. Amen. And you will prosper. Amen. Amen. Make up your mind. Look at what you can do for God. It is not the pastor that is going to tell you this is what I'm supposed to No. Finally, let's look at Proverb 3, verse 9 and 10 quickly. Proverb 3. Be committed to God. Serve Him this year. And you move forward. I'm telling you, it will surprise other people. They say, ah, but is he not the guy? They will be looking at you. But he said he has no money and he's building houses. Amen. <laughs> they, will be, they, don't, they won't know your secret. Because that secret is from God. Proverbs chapter 3. Read it for us, please. 9 and 10 quickly. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with what? Your possessions. Yes. And with the first fruits of all your increase. Yes. So your barns will be filled with plenty. Mm -hmm. And your vats will overflow with new wine. The 